Hello, everybody. I am so excited to introduce this new podcast called I Don't Care. So, I am right now sitting in my mother's closet because I have enough room to sit down. I don't know how the sound is going to be. I don't know if my voice is going to sound good. I don't know what we're going to hear. This is my first ever podcast that I am doing obviously. And so who knows what is to expect. But I thought that I would quickly introduce myself and why I named the podcast I Don't Care. First, I just want to say, when do I breathe? Because I feel like you guys are going to hear it. (sighs) Right? Okay, so that was me taking a deep breath because I am super excited right now and a little anxious because I don't know how this is going to turn out, but we will see. So, my name is Alexia DiStefano. Um, I am an actress in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I, what are you supposed to say? This is always the worst part when you meet people and they're like, tell me something about you or... When you are in class and they're like, okay, let's go in a circle and talk about ourselves. I don't know. They always say, say something interesting. I always fault to, um, I always fault to saying, hi, I'm Alexia and I am Ariana Grande's biggest fan. So that's something about me. I'm Ariana's biggest fan. She changed my life. We can save that story for another time. Uh, what other interesting facts are there about me? I'm Italian, which, you know, has its own things. We have pizza, pasta, except that I'm such a picky eater. I don't like pasta with any type of sauce. I have it with butter, and I'm fully aware that that is super controversial, but it is what it is. We eat what we want, right? What else? Oh, I have a dog. I have a really cute dog, but I don't think that's like that's not a personality trait. So, I guess none of these are. Um, uh-huh. I feel like I'm out of fun facts about me. Okay. Well, I guess we will move on unless I abruptly think of something else to say about me, but I named the podcast I don't care because I find myself saying that all the time. Someone's like, you didn't put the clothes, your clothes away from the laundry. I'm like, I don't care. Your dog is super dirty. I don't care. I mean, there's just a lot of things that I don't care about, but then there's so many things that I do care about. But this podcast is to mainly focus on the things that we say we don't care about, but maybe care way too much about. But we're also going to talk about things that we do care about and things that we genuinely don't care about. And as I'm talking right now, I realize that every week I want to start the episode with talking about things that this week I don't care about. And um, I wish I had thought of that sooner. I mean, I kind of had that idea in mind, but I wish that I knew I was going to stick to it before I started because I don't have anything right now. (laughs) This is um, going great so far. We're almost four minutes in, and I feel like, how do people talk for over an hour to a, I have a tiny microphone in my hand right now uh, that I got from Amazon for eight dollars, plus a little dongle to connect it to my phone, and I'm just like, what do I talk about? But here we are, so let me think. This week, I don't care about... I don't care about most people's problems this week because, hear me out, because this week, and I'm in Canada, but I care so much about American politics because Canada tends to follow in America's footsteps. We tend to do a lot of things that America does. And right now in America, women have just been stripped of so many rights. Their bodies are no longer their bodies. They're controlled by men, politics, and medically it is unfair. Morally it is unfair. 
overall, it's just really unfair. So I think this week, I don't care about problems, small problems people have, small things that, you know, people want to get into. It's like, who cares that, you know, something small in your life didn't go right when women don't have rights anymore in America, it feels like. Also, Facebook. I don't care about Facebook this week because Facebook is just full of pictures of happy families or people who are showing their happy moments. And it's cute and all, sure. But again, there are big issues going on in the world that Facebook doesn't talk about. I mean, you don't see someone actually posting about abortions on Facebook unless it's from their story that's just connected from Instagram. I just think it's so unfair. So I took to my Facebook, which I'll plug it. I think it's, honestly, I don't know. I don't really, I don't care about Facebook. I think it's Alexia DiStefano or something like that. Um, But yeah, I took to it and I was like, people are posting about their families, families that they chose to have, children that they chose to birth. In America, this right is being taken away from so many women. And we are not talking about it on Facebook. I mean, we're talking about it on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat, people are having conversations. But Facebook is for that older generation. And in my personal opinion, they are the ones who need to see it. They're the ones who need to know. So I don't care about Facebook, but the thing about not caring is that you kind of care a lot, and that's why I thought naming the podcast I Don't Care would be fun is because it is kind of contradicting itself. So that's what I don't care about this week is I don't care about people who don't care about abortions and the rights of women. And I think that gives you a little bit on who I am as well. I believe that I am a strong, independent female. I am bisexual. I am a part of the LGBTQ2S plus community, loud and proud. And I respect all people. I believe all people deserve respect. And I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having fun over here. So... I thought in spirit of the name I Don't Care, the podcast, that we would talk about, I found it on a website on Forbes here, and it is 11 things that truly happy people don't care about. I thought we could go over the 11 things and maybe um, have a conversation about it, see what I care about, and see what you guys care about through your minds. So, Let me take one more breath because I keep forgetting to do that. (sighs) Fun. They don't, oh, sorry. Number one, they don't care about pursuing happiness as a life goal. Strange as it sounds, researchers have found that this very pursuit of happiness drives away happiness. In one study, for example, the scientists discovered that people seeking happiness by watching happy movies often felt disappointed afterwards. Okay, I get this. I mean, you know, we we watch um things that make us happy and I'm struggling to think because the first thing that came to my mind is Outer Banks, but nobody in Outer Banks is enjoying their life. So, I'm going to think of a different example. Um and this is hard for me because I I'm totally into horror movies and things were happy isn't really the thing. Okay, so let's just think about any Hallmark movie. They all have happy endings. They're all happy movies. They're all about happiness and love and romance. And if you don't have happiness, love, and romance, and you're watching something about happiness, love, and romance, I can see how it can make you less happy but maybe more disappointed because you're watching something that you want to have but don't have. So, yeah, I think for me, why I thought of Outer Banks immediately is because the friendship between John B., Sarah, Kiara, Pope, and JJ is such a strong bond that I think so many of us want. 
where it's really, really ride or die, and we don't have. So it's kind of like a lingering sadness after because we're watching something that makes us happy because we're happy for them, but we're sad for us because we don't have that kind of friendship, or at least I don't. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I'll find it. We all will. Um, update, I've been talking for 10 minutes. Whew, I'm stressed, but I think we're doing good. We're, we're going to stick through it, and we don't care, right? Um, I was also really shocked that I Don't Care wasn't already a podcast, at least that I could find, and that I was able to create a little website on RSS, and no one had it. So I was really excited. I originally... Okay, I got interrupted there by one of my sunscreen alarms, which is very annoying, and I kind of can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I remember. I was originally going to name this podcast Between Us because, you know, we're going to have conversation between us, that la da 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 we get the vibe, but there's so many with that name, so... I was thinking, okay, what else? What else encapsulated encapsulates who I am? And I don't care. I really don't care. I don't care about so many things that it drives my mom crazy. Every time she's like, "Well, why don't you do this?" I'm like, ah, "I don't care." And it's not because I'm a bad daughter. It's just because um, I don't care. Okay, so yeah, I think that people who do watch TV or movies or whatever watching something that they long for do end up being sad because they don't have it so that totally makes sense to me so people who are happy don't watch things that um I guess wouldn't make them happy I guess if you're rich you can watch things about rich people because you're like "Ah, I'm already rich and if you're in love you can be like well I can watch a romance because I'm in love um number two They don't care who is to blame. That's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to read the huge novel that is written um, underneath. Hmm. Let's think for a second. Who do we always put blame on in situations? Ourselves or other people? Recently, I've been finding out that I've been blaming my dog for a lot of stuff. And I'm not even, like, trying to be funny right now. I guess that wasn't funny. I don't know. I'm assuming you guys laughed at that, but I doubt it. Anywho, I like to blame her because I'm like, ugh, I'm running late. Ugh, it's my dog. Or, oh, I don't have time to do this. I'm with my dog. Or, I'm so mad at my brother because he's not taking care of my dog. So it's, like, our dog. And so, yeah, sometimes I put the blame on her. I think I'm also pretty good at putting the blame on myself. Um, I think, yeah, the person that I put the blame on the most, if not for me, would be my brother, just because it's easy. Um, and the thing about us is, mm, I don't think we put blame on each other much, because there's really nothing to put blame on. Uh, I'm about to move, and I don't know what noises we're going to hear. I'm trying to be quiet. Okay, I moved successfully. (sighs) Taking another breath. I'm going to get better at that, learning when to breathe. But I got in a bit of an argument the other week with someone who really, really, really annoys me. I mean, I'm sure we all have those people who it's just you don't want to talk to them or to see their text messages because, I don't know, maybe something happened that just makes you annoyed with them or they're just so different than you. But this person in particular does not know when to stop. Like, they just don't know when to stop. They, um, they like to push blame on everything, and even though I was taking responsibility for things that I didn't feel that were 100% my fault, I was like, sure, it was me. Okay, it's fine. You know, try to stop the argument and create a civil conversation, but even me putting the blame on myself was wrong in some way. So sometimes I feel that people just need to shut the fuck up and 
say I don't care. Because honestly, if you don't care and I don't care, then the, the it's not, then it stopped. Then there's nothing to argue about. And it was work-related in a way, too. So it was like, oh my god, like, I'm trying to be as professional as I can right now. And you're making it so difficult. So, (laughs) I don't understand how a lot of the time people can put that blame on themselves and accept it. Like, don't get me wrong, I do put that blame on myself when it is fit, which is a lot of the time. A lot of the times I do something stupid or silly And I'll be like, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Um, And I totally own up to when I'm doing something wrong. But it's those times when I know I'm not the one to blame. And yet I still try to be the bigger person. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no, it's okay. I will take the blame. And it backfires. Like, for what? For what we, for what? Oh my God, I can't speak. I'm so angry about it. But it's like, why? Why? I'm going to read something. Um, they found that self-blame of the... Na- Ooh, God. Just a fun fact about me. I can't read. Like, I can. I can read. But I can't read out loud. Um, it's like something really struggling for me and makes me really, really anxious. Um, and I want to go to the doctor to see if I have dyslexia, but I just haven't. And I'm like, I'm you know, I graduated college, now I'm 19, like, if I can't read out loud, it is what it is, but at the same time, actors read out loud every time they have a cold read, so maybe it's something I should figure out. Let me try that sentence again. They found that self-blame of the negative sort could be a defense mechanism, one wherein the depressed person did not accept blame appropriately in some past critical instance. Yet, when blame is accurately attributed or accepted, brain processes associated with depression are not related to self-blame. So, if any of you understood what I just read, great, because I kind of didn't. Um, It was a lot. It was a lot, a lot. Um, But I guess point number two is they just don't care. Oh, they don't care who is to blame. Oh, that is different than what I was saying. They don't care who is to blame. So they don't care if you're to blame or if I'm to blame. It's not really a big deal. To the extent happiness means reducing stress. One of the best ways incurably happy people um, do so is by not assigning and or giving accepting blame. Interesting. So no one is to blame. Oh, Okay, so in the book of the Seven High Habits of Highly Affected People, this would kind of be um, a win-win situation where no one is to blame or a win-win um, or no-deal situation where it's if we can't come up with someone responsible, we just walk away. We, we um, clean our hands of the situation and we move on. So um, that's interesting. That's a whole different perspective than what I was just blabbing on about for 10 minutes. Um, okay. Let's move here to point number three. They don't care about losing things to change. They don't care about losing things to change. Oh, okay. Um, But before I assume what that means, like I did with the last one, let's read a little bit. The enemy of change is our inability to let things go. Indeed, some brain scientists at Yale have found that the stronger our attachment to possessions, the more stress we become to losing them to change. Okay. Naturally, that leads us to resist change. Okay, so I, I am excited to talk about this because change is something that, yes, is scary, but is also so exciting and so fun. So let's talk about Let's talk about change for a second before we talk about being scared to lose possessions to change. But change for me, and I'm going to dedicate a whole episode to my high school experience because I think it's just kind of crazy in a way. And it's something vulnerable because I kind of just been through it. Like I graduated um, last year, 2021. So it's kind of fresh, but um, maybe it's good to talk about it when it's fresh. But anyways. For me, I was just so excited to get the hell out of high school. 
it was one of those things where I felt so trapped and I was being held back knowing, um, kind of knowing what I wanted to do. And that's a whole other thing. We'll talk about it as well as how I got into acting and whatever. But I always knew my next step, whether it was really the step I went with or not throughout my grade 12 year. And so I was just so angry that that change wasn't already there. I was like, well, I know what I want to do. Why do I have to wait, you know, 10 months to get there? Like, let me just get there. Let's make that change right now. So change can be really exciting. And, and I think it's one of those things where it just kind of needs to happen sometimes. You can't, you can't create a life, a true happy life without, you know, being able to accept change. If your life is the same as it was when you were younger and no change has happened, I mean, how boring is that? And how kind of scary is that thought to have no change in your life? That's the scary thing. Um, I also don't know at what point, like right now I'm moving my mic back and forth. I don't know where it sounds best. So, um, sorry about that. We will figure it out. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Two things. One, I get sidetracked super easy. Uh, might get annoying for you guys. My apologies. But number two, sorry. Because Canadians say sorry. Americans say sorry. So, I need any time anyone hears me say sorry to call me out because that is not okay. Not because I'm Canadian, but because in the acting world, we use American dialect. So, I'm trying to train myself and I just thought I would say that. Anyways, let's get back to point number three. Truly happy people don't care about losing things to change. Now, for the most part, I can see where, you know, if I lost something, a possession to change, if I'm moving out of my mom's house and I'm leaving my bedroom and everything in it for new things, um, sure, I think that could be stressful in itself financially, but a good change, you know, new space, new things. Um, let me see, uh, yet this, da-da-da-da-da, as another research shows, stress leads to loss, da-da-da, our mental health, so yeah, I mean, I'm gonna move again, I don't know how much sound is made around me when I move, but, and we won't talk too much about this topic anymore, I mean, um, number three, because, uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, You can attach yourself to possessions um, quite easily, especially if they have, you know, a a person associated to them who maybe isn't around anymore or just a story behind it. So I can definitely see how, myself included, we get attached to certain possessions, but I think it's definitely good to be able to let go of at least most of your stuff to change. if need be, I would assume. Anyways, let's move on. This point's not that fun. Number four, they don't care about missing out. Oh my good goodness. Let's talk about this. Because FOMO is a real thing. I have FOMO. I'm also extremely socially anxious. And so... It's kind of like a weird thing for me where it's I have the fear of missing out, but I also have the fear of showing up. And it creates um, a difficult balance, I guess, for me because I'm just like, I want to be there. I don't want to miss a damn thing, but I also don't want to talk to anyone and I want people to leave me alone because I'm super shy and nervous that I will do something, not even do something, but like say something weird because I'm just super socially anxious. But let's see what this says here. Similar to their lack of concern about change, happy people are not worried about missing out. 
FOMO has become a popular phenomenon of discussion, especially in regards to teens. Mm. I think I think there's a misconception around teens. I think a lot of people associate feelings towards teenagers, but adults feel those things as well, but maybe just don't admit it. I don't know, because I feel like everybody feels FOMO, not just teenagers. Um, but we'll see. We'll see when we're older, I guess. I mean, maybe people here are older than teenagers. Let me know. Um, 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 um so, hence, da 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 homo. Oh, homo. What? I meant to say FOMO. Uh, FOMO would claim it a good thing. Okay, I don't really know. I'm trying to read and it's not going well. It's just making me awkward. So, yeah, so I guess people who are truly happy don't care about missing out and don't have FOMO. And I can see how that's really beneficial and something I should work on. So, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to learn to not have FOMO. Point number 5. They don't waste time on conspiracies. By now, you're seeing the strong connection between anxiety, stress, and happiness. Good. Generally speaking, stress kills happiness. Moreover, few things incite stress more than conspiracy theories. Okay, but conspiracy theories are so fun. And maybe I am contradicting this entire, I mean, article. But, I mean, I would consider myself an overall happy person Um, And I love conspiracy theories. I love them. But maybe we're not thinking of the same conspiracy theories here are me and the Forbes article. So let me keep going. If you're under great stress and and strain, for example, you're more likely to believe evil people are out to get you. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't maybe say this as conspiracy theories, but paranoia, maybe, because I, I get it. I, okay, this morning I took my dog to the dog park and we have to walk, um, we have to walk past an elementary school. And so I cross the street and I get to the corner and the kids are out for lunch. And one of the girls, um, she comes to the fence and is like, oh my God, cute dog. And first I don't like kids. So my answer wasn't like, oh, thank you so much. It was just, thank you. And I walked away. And then she whispered something to her friend that she was with, and I couldn't hear what she said, but immediately I was like, oh no, she sensed that I didn't like her because she was a kid. But then I was like, maybe she was just saying, that dog's so cute, or maybe it wasn't about me at all. Why am I worried about what some fourth grader might or might not have said about me? So, yeah. I think paranoia or conspiracy theories is what they're wanting to say, is definitely a result that would not lead to happiness. I totally see it. I mean, it makes complete sense. All the time I'm like to my friends, I don't think this person likes me. This person does not like me. You know, I just might not be the most likable person. But in in the end, it's just all in my head. And I think that reverts back to the FOMO thing where it's Um, oh, I I just made a weird noise with my mouth and I'm sure, I'm positive that the mic caught that. Um, what was I saying? Right, so I think that they connect because, especially with the, um, social anxiety thing is because a lot of the time I'm, I'm worried about what others are thinking of me. And I know someone said this is if we're also worried about what people are thinking of us, we have no time to think about other people because we're just so engorged in what they think about us. And that's like deep and something that we should consider because if I'm in my head about what someone is thinking about me, I'm sure that person who I'm referring to is probably also wondering what people are thinking about them and not thinking at all about me. It's like we're all self-absorbed in our own ways, yet selfless also. It's like a weird thing. Um, so, yeah, I can totally see how happy people don't waste time on conspiracies. 
But conspiracy theories like stuff with Britney Spears or the Mandela effects, like stuff like that is super fun and we should never let go of those. Maybe I'll do an episode on conspiracy theories because I love them so much. Okay, point number six. I wonder if this is even interesting. I hope so because I'm like 40 minutes in. Anywho, point number six, they don't hold grudges. Happy people don't hold grudges, which is powerful. And I don't think I'm someone to hold grudges. I think for me, the thing is like I can get in a fight with someone and know that I'm mad at them, but I don't remember why or what they said. I just know that they did something to make me mad, but I can't remember what. So then I'm just like, I forget. And I don't hold grudges because I just don't remember why I was mad at them. So for me, I'm lucky in that sense of just, I'm forgetful. And so I I genuinely don't hold grudges for the most part because of that. But I also can hold a grudge. And it does take a while for me to let it go. But I mean, I think we all do that, except for truly happy people. So I'll take a... um, (laughs) <laughs> this is just a podcast of me saying, I'll take a page out of their books. I'll do that. I'll do what they say to be happy. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's just move on to the next point. Um, let's see. They don't envy others. Huh. Now, there's a difference, I think, between envy and finding role models. And I think sometimes that line can be fuzzy. Because for me, I don't envy people, but I look up to people. And sometimes I look up to people so much that it turns into a little bit of envy where it's like, I just want that. Like Lindsay Morgan, for example, uh, she played Raven in the show The Hundred and I love her and she changed my life and we'll talk about her one day. But um. I just love her so much and I watch interviews and I see her on TV and I'm just like, I want that. And I I don't even know if it is in an envious way. I'm just like so passionate and and it's a mixture of I'm just so happy for you that you're living this life and I can't wait to be a part of it like that too. So I guess it is just me looking up to her and looking up to people, but also just like, wanting that like wanting that lifestyle and wanting that success so I don't know but gosh to envy people um for real is super dangerous I think I mean on social media the thing that people talk about the most which I kind of have never I mean I've experienced it obviously but never enough to where it's affected me, where, you know, we'll talk about Kourtney Kardashian. She's got the nicest ass. And I love it. And I want it. I'm not envious of it, but I know that people are. And sometimes that envy turns into anger, where it's like, well, why don't I have that ass? Why don't I look that way? Or why couldn't it be me? Or fuck you for being the one with it. You know, you have the riches. You could have bought it. Maybe she did. Who knows? I'm a big Kardashian fan. I'm sure that's controversial as well. But, you know, so, yeah, envy can turn into anger. And anger is not happiness. I totally get it. Um, Point number eight. Truly happy people don't worry about being seen as ignorant. Interesting. Let's read about that. In an important study, behavioral scientists found that women who worried about being seen as ignorant work much harder than men to prove um, observers wrong. This created a backfire effect of generating more stress and therefore greater unhappiness. Hmm. Um, There was no difference between men and women in terms of their efforts during this exercise um, accepting the anxiety. This suggests men who don't care about being seen as stupid were happier. Huh. 
In other words, one key to happiness is to suspect worry um, about being perceived as ignorant or incompetent. Let's talk about that. (laughs) And let's talk about men and women being compared. Not even being compared. Just just the, the comparison itself of men who maybe are in control and a woman who is in control because it's just a fact that a man who is in control gets more respect than a woman that's just a fact so for females to maybe have a little bit of that nervousness that someone is going to take them the wrong way is totally acceptable now i also believe that us women need to hold ourselves and know that we are at the same level as that man who is in charge. So we don't need to worry about what other people think because at the end of the day, we're doing the exact same thing. We deserve the same respect and we're bad bitches for doing it. So yeah, who cares if we're ignorant? If I need to do a job, I'm going to do the job. Now, there's always ways to be nice about it, and that's what we do. But if we need to be bossy, we got to be bossy. There's just no way around it. So, yeah, I totally... um, I'm just saying, I totally agree with everything. I totally see it. I totally see how that works. Um, But I do. Um, Okay. Point number nine. Truly happy people don't worry about the future. Huh. I'm just absorbing that for a second because... As someone who graduated high school, went into college, and then graduated college, right now in my life, this is the future is what I am building and what I'm creating and all really that's on my mind. So at what point in our lives do we stop being concerned about our futures and only worry about the present? Because sure, I can only worry about the present, which I do sometimes. Like, every day I, I usually only think about today. But today helps me with tomorrow. And tomorrow helps me with my future. So, I don't know. I feel like in this development stage of my life, my future is very important to think about because it's what I'm forming and what I'm creating and working hard to accomplish. So let's read about, let's read the article and see what they say. Behavioral studies since the pandemic have found a wave of mental and physical illnesses have been directly connected to worries about the future. Indeed, other studies have shown that people with anxiety disorders worry largely because they anticipate future worries. The irony is that no amount of worry predicts the future. Indeed, Despite so-called self-dubbed futurists now increase in numbers on the internet, for example, none predicted. For example, none predicted the pandemic. The suggest. Oh my God! Let me go back. For example, none predicted the pandemic. That suggests prediction of what comes after equally difficult and equally. Um, hard times. The happiness lesson to be learned is this. Don't worry about the future as you can neither predict it or change it. Okay. But you can create it. You can invent it. And I think um, I'm just so focused right now on career um, and I'm not expanding my mind. So I'm going to do that. Yes. I don't worry about my future husband or my future wife or Although I don't want to get married. So my future girlfriend or boyfriend. I don't want kids. So I don't think about it. I don't think about where I'm going to live. I don't. I mean I have dreams and goals and ideas. But I don't think about these things. And I don't cultivate my life around them. So sure. Yeah. Let's just not worry about the future together. But that's also... Um, worry a lot about the future when it comes to our careers and things that we need to work for in the now 
so we can have those futures. Like, people don't work for today. They work for the money to pay their bills in a few weeks. They pay for the food that they're going to eat at dinner. You know what I mean? So we kind of also all work around the future. So I guess it's like a fine line or something. Um, Point number 10. They don't worry about the ill will of others. Obviously, the actions of other people, particularly when ill-intended, can upset us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, of course, I don't know what I'm going to say. I think it's obvious that when someone does something with ill intentions towards us, that maybe holding a grudge is something that we would do or putting blame on someone is something that we would do. So I guess it correlates with each other where it's like, I'm not going to worry about why you did something or your intentions towards it because I know who I am. I'm in a good place and that's all that matters. And I'm not going to blame you and I'm not going to hold a grudge against you. But maybe I just won't associate myself around you again. Or maybe we just have to change our relationship so things like this don't happen again. So yeah, I think that's um, maturing. I think that's, yeah, for sure, maturing is all of what I just said. Point 11, which is the last point for how truly people become happy. I just want to say this isn't something I'm going to do every um, episode. I just thought that it would be something interesting to talk about um, in in the first episode because it talks about what happy people don't care about in this podcast is called I don't care and I'm generally happy so yeah point 11 truly happy people don't care about becoming famous wealthy or remaining beautiful okay let's start with point one becoming famous yeah I think I think people who want to become rich and famous a think it's easy and think, I mean, I'm not rich or famous, so I'm not talking based on firsthand experiences, but I am someone who is heavily involved in pop culture, and I can see the effects um, on people, and I listen to the interviews of people saying, no, it, it's not that easy, and I struggle, and I still have mental health issues, and I still worry and stress, and I'm self-conscious. I mean, being rich and famous doesn't solve all your problems and it doesn't I guess cancel you out or make you better than other people so I think if you aspire to be rich or famous because you've worked hard for it and you believe that that's what you deserve then that's different than being like no I want to be rich and famous because um because I don't want stress and I don't want issues and I don't want this or that because it's it doesn't cancel out but let's talk about truly happy people don't care about remaining beautiful and that's interesting because I think we all have beauty and that beauty is both from within and from out and I think we hold on to it as we grow older and I think that that beauty enhances as we grow older And the confidence that we gain as we get older makes it more beautiful. So I think that remaining beautiful isn't obtainable because we just become more beautiful. But I think for me, personally, is I wear sunscreen every day, all day, every two hours type type situation. Not to remain beautiful, but to hold on to my youth. So... I always say I want to be like Kris Jenner when I'm older, Cher, Ellen DeGeneres. I mean, these women, Jennifer Lopez, she's not old, but she you get the point where it's of an older age than I am now. All these women are still so beautiful, active, healthy, and I think that's fine. I think that's something we should all aspire to be like, maybe not like you know, those women if you don't want to, but I think we should all aspire to be healthy 
physical and mentally when we're older. And for me, on top of that is just remaining, um, maintaining good skin. Um, that's just important to me. So it might not be important to all of you, but it's important to me. Okay, guys, that's how to become a truly happy person. Those are the things that you need to not care about to be truly happy. And I think I agree with most of it. I also disagree with certain points. And I don't know if any of this was interesting to listen to, but this is the first episode. So if it's not, I won't do it again. I mean, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to talk about the same thing again. Next week, I might talk about skincare or murder mysteries or ghost stories. Or I really want to talk about Anna Delvey one day. If you know Anna Delvey, great. If you don't, I will let you know. So I think I think one day I'm going to talk about Anna Delvey. Uh, I'm surely going to talk about the show The Wilds because it is incredible. Pretty much this podcast is to talk about the things that I'm super passionate about, but to also talk about certain things that I don't give a shit about. And I think that's super fun, and I'm really looking forward to it. I don't want to wrap up just yet because I don't know how long I've been filming. Is it filming? Recording for? So I'm just going to keep going for a couple more minutes just to kind of talk about, I guess, what I see for the future, though I know we just said truly happy people don't think about the future. We're going to think about the future for a second. Um, So I'm thinking to have some of my close friends and my my mom and my brother on a couple episodes maybe to talk about certain things. I guess that would be personalized to them. And this is this is kind of, you know, every week is going to be something different. There's no structure. There's nothing that we really need to get done. We're here to relax. We're here to unwind or start your day or do whatever you want to do. Maybe you're in the shower or trying to poop. I don't really know, but no matter what it is, we're just gonna, we're gonna talk. Or really, I'm gonna talk for such a long time that I'm wondering if I can even talk anymore after this, but I'm sure I can. So yeah, anyway, I don't know what I was saying. I'm just looking forward to continuing, and this was way less scary than I thought, though I guess filming isn't the scary part. The scary part is uploading and seeing what happens. But regardless of what happens, who cares? I don't care. I don't care. I just know that I'm creating something that's fun and hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know. I'm thinking of somehow adding like a theme song, but I don't sing. So if it was me, it would be like, I... I don't care. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, if we like that, let me know. <laughs> if someone wants to make me one for free because I don't have money, um, then let me know. Uh, so yeah, that's that's part of a plan. Sponsors always looking for sponsors. Uh, though I know that's annoying for listeners. However, um, oh well. Uh, I don't care. Um, oh, also, I thought may as well, since this is a podcast, maybe talk about a couple podcasts that I do like. One is called Relax with Colleen Ballinger and Eric Stocklin. Colleen Ballinger, I don't know why I'm saying her name like that. Colleen is also known as Miranda Sings. However, the podcast um, really doesn't have anything to do with Miranda if you don't like her um, or if you don't know her. I love that podcast. I love watching it on YouTube. It's just so funny. They end up talking about poop a lot, but I d- I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. I love it. Um, Obviously, Anything Goes by um, Emma Chamberlain. We love her. And I love in the morning times listening to meditation podcasts i usually do a quick five minute one or something but i really really love that and so those are kind of the podcasts i listen to um but i definitely recommend relax 
it's not at all about relaxing. It's kind of the opposite. But I love it. And they start every episode with something that needs to relax. So I feel like since in spirit of talking about that, I'm going to say my relax. And I think this week what needs to relax is dog hair. Dog hair needs to relax because everything gets stuck to dog hair. My dog is a Pomeranian mini Eskimo Yorkie Maltese mix. And she has gorgeous long hair, but everything gets stuck to it. Literally everything. It is so annoying. So dog hair needs to relax because not to mention it's summertime, so she's shedding and it's just everywhere. And as I'm doing my skincare, I can feel it attaching to my skin, my face. And it's like, get off me. It's so annoying. So yeah, dog hair needs to relax. This is I Don't Care, the podcast. I am Alexia DiStefano, your host. My social media, since it's the first one, I'll give it a plug. On Instagram is Alexia underscore D-E underscore Stefano. My, oh, that was a loud swallow. Um, what other social media do I have? I don't think I really have any other social media that I'm going to plug yet. Oh, oh no. I was going to say my IMDB account, but what's there to do there? Uh, you could track me if you want. I don't know what that means, but yeah, it's Alexia DiStefano if you really want to track me. Not my locate. Sorry, I can't speak. Not my location, but um, I don't know, my status? I'm not quite sure. Anyways, this was the first episode of I Don't Care, the podcast. Like I just said earlier, my name's Alexia DiStefano. Next week, we have, I'm sure, something fun planned. It's not planned yet, but it will be. And by we, I mean me for you to listen to. So I'm very excited. I can't wait to listen to this back and hear if the audio was shit or not. Um, anyways, that was I Don't Care. See you guys next week. Oh, I need to also figure out when I plan I'm planning on posting so I guess TBD see you sometime next week and I'll have everything better planned all right thank you for listening everyone hope you come back more fun things to talk about and this was I don't care bye